Hello, my name is Matt Fankhauser, and I am uh, teaching the children's service for this Sunday, uh, April 26th. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Normally, we'd be here at the church during second service, and I miss all of those kids that, uh, all of you kids that I'm used to seeing over the last four to six months, but this is uh, what we're doing for now. Uh, and today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a miracle that Jesus did when he was here on earth. And uh, as I was looking at this passage, I thought to myself, what do I think of when I think of miracles? And I don't know about any of you guys, but I'm a really big sports fan. And so when I think of miracles, I think of, you know, my team being way down and then they you know, score a bunch of points at the end of the game and come back. And I think to myself, oh, that was a miracle. Or for your kids, uh, for you kids, your parents probably, or maybe think of the miracle on ice, which was a hockey game from, oh, 40 years ago now. And, you know, the, the American hockey team beat a Russian team that they were never, ever supposed to beat. Well, Jesus did miracles, and those, the miracles that Jesus did were way, way more interesting than any of these sports miracles. So uh, let's talk a little bit about John chapter nine. And this is the uh, a passage that deals with Jesus healing a blind man. And so our story starts uh, talking about why Jesus did miracles. And Jesus did miracles for two reasons. Uh, first of all, he does miracles to show us that he loves us. and. One great miracle that Jesus did that shows us that he loves us is he came back from the dead. And we just talked about that a couple of weeks ago at Easter. Uh, and another reason that Jesus does miracles or did miracles is to show that he has the power to heal us and to prove that he is God. And this is the miracle or this is a miracle that we're talking about today. A miracle that Jesus did to prove that he has the power to heal us and to prove that he is God. So. Our story starts with a blind man on the, the roadside. And back when Jesus was alive, they didn't have cars or trucks or SUVs. And so you had to walk or maybe take a donkey or a horse down the road. Uh, and uh, there was a man who was blind, he couldn't see. And he was sitting on the side of the road and he was asking a penny for the poor. And he would call out and ask everybody that passed him. Think about how difficult this would have been for this man. The, there was no braille back then. There were no computers that talked. Um, he probably had a cane, but this was probably a very difficult situation for this man. He probably couldn't work. He probably couldn't make money on his own. Uh, and so he was just asking people for money. And as Jesus and the disciples were passing, one of the disciples said, teacher, teacher being Jesus, is this man blind because he sinned? And so the disciples, or one of the disciples, is asking Jesus, did this man do something wrong and that's why he can't see? And this is a tough question. And it's possible that the man himself thought he did something wrong and that's why uh, he couldn't see. And, and we might think that in our current situation. Did we do something wrong and that's why we have to stay at home during this last month or so? Is there something that uh, we did that made God mad at us? And, and that's why we uh, have to not go to school and not see our friends the way we do. And, and the answer that Jesus gives us, though, is something different than that. Jesus says, no, he was born blind so that he and others will know what God can do. And one of my favorite parts of this story is, is understanding who it is that God was dealing with here. Jesus didn't pick some man that was rich and powerful and popular and, uh, you know, maybe good at sports or a famous YouTuber. He picked a man that probably was very easy not to notice and that a lot of people didn't notice or didn't want to be friends with. And Jesus says, I'm going to, uh, this man was born blind so that I can show you how powerful God is. And at that point, Jesus does something that seems a little bit strange. Jesus walks up to the man, he stops, and he spits on the ground. And that's a little weird, it seems like, right? But in that time, there's a lot of dirt on the ground. 
And so he spits on the dirt and he turns the dirt into mud. And he takes the mud and he puts the mud in the man's eyes. And the man who's blind, he can't see any of this, is probably thinking, what is happening here? Why is this, why is this man putting mud in my eyes? And Jesus tells him, now go and wash it off. And this is a very interesting part of the story here because this man could have said, you know what, Jesus, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. But instead, he listened to Jesus. He understood what Jesus' promises were. And he trusted in, in Jesus that Jesus was doing this for a good reason. And so the man went and he washed his eyes out. And when the mud was cleared from his eyes, he shouted, I can see. Now, can you imagine being however old you are at home, whether you're five years old or 10 years old or 40 years old like me, never being able to see anything in your entire life, then this man Jesus, who maybe you've never seen before, comes to you, puts some mud on your eyes, and then you go and wash it out, and now suddenly you can see. And so maybe you can see your mom for the first time, or your dad for the first time, or your dog or cat or fish, and you can see all the beautiful sunrises and sunsets and flowers and whatever else it is that we like to see, he finally gets to see at this, uh, at this stage in his life. And so he runs home. He can see he runs home and he wants to tell all of the people about the things that he can see and about the things that he has seen and that have been done to him. And people ask him, well, what happened? How can you see? And this man says something that I think a lot of us will be saying here in the next few months. I don't have all of the answers. I don't know what happened. The one thing I do know is this. I once was blind, but now I see. And there's a lot of useful information there for us as we deal with these sort of uncertain times. I don't know what's gonna happen over the next month. I know I'm a little bit nervous about it sometimes. I wish that I could go to work a little bit more often than I uh, do, although I do like staying at home. Hi, Ryan and Lily. Um, I know that we wish we could go to school and we wish that we could go to church and sing songs and go to the park and things like that. And so maybe we're nervous that we can't do all of those things. But we do know the same thing that this man knows, and that is that Jesus has promised to love us, he's promised to protect us, and that after all of this is over, even though we were once blind, we were once nervous, there will be a time when we're not nervous. There will be a time when, when this man uh, was able to see. So let's talk a little bit about our verse of the month, and we'll uh, talk about how this ties into that. Our verse of the month is Genesis 28, 15, and it says, I am with you and I will protect you everywhere you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. In this story, Jesus helped this man. He promised the man that he would protect him and he did protect him. He promised us that he would be able to heal us and he did heal this man physically from being blind. And with that, let's pray. Dear Jesus, uh, thank you for the opportunity to know you well. Uh, thank you for promising uh, us that you'll love us and protect us and care for us. Uh, thank you for sending your son to die for us and to give us eternal life. Um, we thank you that we can trust you even as we're maybe nervous or upset or sad about the changes that have uh, happened in our lives over the last few weeks. But we also thank you that you've promised us to uh, do all of those things for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for uh, watching our video today. Uh, thank you for joining us at Moon Valley Bible Church, and hopefully we'll see you in person soon. But if not, we'll see you in video next week.